first thing I need to record my selfie. Thank you guys. Whatever the outcome is, I have evidence it was a success. <laughs> Semi-success. Um, y a-t-il des Français dans la salle? Excellent. Oh, God. Les f you guys are working on that? Okay. Les Français, allez. Qui a vu un dîner de con? Bienvenue à mon dîner. Uh, for the, yeah, sorry, closed captioning. Sorry, folks. A wonderful French movie uh, called The Dinner Game. Very dark French humor. Um, who has solar panels? Who cares about their privacy? Yeah. You didn't um, raise your hand? Get out. There's an EFF talk, I think, next door. You can ask about privacy. Still nothing. Is it working on that side? Yeah. Who's seen War Games? Excellent movie. It hasn't aged a minute. I did. Um, but even if uh, Lichfield was cool, I was much more serious about my craft. Serious enough not to have distraction of a girlfriend. By choice, of course. Um, this quote is excellent. It is actually what I believe I am. Trying to take things, opening them up, and figuring out ways to make them better. Isn't that why you're all here? Well, it's not happy hour yet. Hey, by the way, I need my speaker shot. I could use two, actually. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So we're going to talk solar. Uh, this is a system by Tygo. I brought the little part that is the only piece that we're going to look at today, which is the, the connection between the solar array and the internet. It's really cool because not only does it upload config, uh, production data to the internet, it also downloads configuration of the panels. Things like maximum uh, power, voltage, maximum temperature of the panels, and things like that. Of course, over the internet, um, what it does is gives the installer the ability to monitor remotely the production of my system. Why? Because they have an SLA and they actually guarantee production of my array and they'll pay me back if it doesn't produce what it's expected to. Yes, indeed. Uh, I could. I would not. Because think about it. About 9,000 kilowatt hours a year of production. This says 15 cents. Yes, I could score 1,000, 2,000 bucks, but I would get busted for it because this is not the only thing that reports my production. So that angle, you can have fun, uh, not with me. This is what, it's, what started it all. You know how you take your Nest and, or any IoT device, when you initially power it, it starts advertising an access point. Uh, you connect to it, configure it, tell it, this is my home network, and then it shuts down and becomes just a Wi-Fi client. Not this one. It connects both to my network as well as the open access point. Uh, that really, really bugged me. So, started to need to figure, I needed to figure out how to fix that problem and started inventorying all of the attack surfaces I had uh, at my disposal. We talked about the access point a little HTTPD server that we'll talk about later. SSH, cool. 
Yeah, except there's a built-in uh, defense in depth, maybe. It crashes after 1,500 tries. I have to repower the uh, re uh, power cycle the device. So quickly, it was no longer funny. Uh, serial to TCP. I never got it to work, unfortunately, but it had a nice little UI. Do you want the, uh, the console to be tunneled through TCP or the display, this little guy, or the gateway that it controls through, um, through a serial port? From a physical perspective, of course I opened that box. Remember what I told you? I take a screwdriver to anything. Um, Nicely labeled at the bottom left of the screen, you see a little uh, silk screen of console. Guess what? You plug in your um, serial to USB connector and it works. So I had a nice console interface, which unfortunately required authentication. So back to square one. U boot. Excellent. Maybe I could boot it in recovery mode, fix the password. No, unfortunately, they put a password on the, uh, on the bootloader and you know, I have a confession. I live in California. This was October, the middle of winter. This device is outdoors. It was too hard for me to take, so I had to look at an easier path and more comfortable. Um, so, behind this access point, there is a website, as I mentioned. That website has properties. If you use Shodan, you'll find out that actually 12 or so uh, very courageous people, maybe ignorant, decided to have that device also internet accessible. Guys, this is where you're supposed to laugh. Thank you. <laughs> um, Thanks to Shodan, I was able to verify that my findings, actually no, my lawyer is not present, so do what you want with the Shodan findings. Um, remember the open access point? It has an SSID. So I went to those wonderful folks at wiggle.net and uh, looked at their database. Guess what, I'm not the only one who detected those. Uh, they're all over the world and they're captured for posterity. You now have GPS coordinates of all of those devices or some of those devices. Um, who war drives? Thank you, keep doing it. Upload to Wiggle uh, because it's a treasure trove of data about people that, I can't say F up, no, mess up. Let's go back to the web server. That's it. My talk is over. Thank you. Um, there's an authentication screen. We can't do much about it. Can we? Of course not. It's funny how I've seen other slide decks today that also use a password file called rocku.txt. Who's used it in the past? Oh, come on, guys. If you didn't raise your hand, that's the best password file on earth. Uh, so I ran my brute force. 36 hours later, yeah, I know, I know. I'm lazy, but it was 36 computers, computer hours, not mine. Uh, turns out admin support works very well. Okay, where do we go from there? Looking around the little website on the server, there's a nice little page that caught my attention. No such file or directory. Ooh, guess what happens when you put a file there? Uh, for those of you who don't have their uh, URL decode option on Google Glasses, this is what it looks like. Copy shadow file into that location. What would happen? Yeah, I might break my $20,000 solar array by putting something there, uh, but I didn't. By the way, this MD5, I tried to brute force it. I failed. If you ever get to it, I believe it is still on those devices. Uh, please send me an email. 
I would appreciate. So that, that route didn't work out. Um, I needed something easier. Remember, I can, I can essentially run a script through that injection. Um, so PSR. Oh, guess what? The HTTP server is running under root. Bingo. Also, the manufacturer, nice enough, has Netcat already on the device. Ooh. By the way, I won't admit that in public, but it still took me four to six hours to get my reverse shell working. But I didn't say that. Um, I did eventually get it working. I had root on that device. What do you do with root? I know what I didn't do. I didn't get a copy of the file system. So once I was locked out, I no longer had anything to work on. But after a little bit of uh, kung fu with the drive uh, mount, come on. I know, I know. It feels good to pretend I'm that good. Um, what I did was not rocket science, I just had the time to do it. Clearly, that manufacturer picked the wrong customer to sell a device to. I'm sure they're still regretting that move. Uh, it probably cost them a lot more in uh, cleanup than it did in uh, profits. So anyhow, looking around the file system, something caught my attention. Actually, not the file system, the running processes. OpenVPN. You guys know what OpenVPN is for? A VPN tunnel. Guess what? That VPN tunnel was on at all times on the device. I didn't do it, and I swear this is not a joke. I did not scan that VPN subnet. The manufacturer confirmed that all of its little siblings are on that subnet. Of course, nowhere was it mentioned in any of the documentation that nobody ever reads that there was a VPN. Remember that device is still on my home network? I was trusting it even though it didn't appear trustable. I was still doing that. Um, so let's move on to me trying to get something done about the device. So I try politely in October to get their attention. Hey guys, there might be a problem. You know, it, it, I'd like to talk to someone who actually understand security. Yeah, by the way, in the back, if the font size is too small, next time remember DEFCON is all about LineCon. Get early to the talk. <laughs> so a few emails later, um, while still trying to reach to people that uh, might understand me through LinkedIn, my ins clueless installer, and his contacts, I got nowhere. Actually, it got even worse. We're now in mid-December. Are you the owner of this device? Do you have the right to do what you're doing? Yeah, I've seen that play out not that well. Um, they actually already had my full name, my email address, my everything. They already knew everything about me, but they couldn't find me in the database. Um, this was the icing on the cake. For those in the back, I will read what is highlighted, or I'll, I'll paraphrase. We can help you get access to the system. Do I need access to the system at that point? No, I can help myself. Um, and I, I, I need to read that one. Quote, Info of system installed on your roof is always kept as confidential since it was installed. Apparently, before it is installed, not guaranteed. And, you know, English is my second language. I don't, I don't understand that sentence. So, time to, stay, to change strategy. Clearly, I'm getting nowhere. I've been at it for two months already. Uh, I'm talking to the wrong kind of support. So I send this email. What I'm saying there is, hey guys, here's a picture. You remember the root picture? 
Here's a picture. The last line doesn't belong there. Forward this to whoever is in charge. I don't want to talk to you no more. Remember the VPN tunnel? Within an hour, they were logging in on that device and they were starting cleaning up. Not, not security cleaning up, damage control cleaning up. Disabling my account, shutting down the web server uh, and things like that. In the process, yeah, disabling my entire array went offline for four or six hours. Um, I was not done helping, guys. Please, I was trying to be nice. Uh, thankfully, I didn't tell them about one thing I had found while browsing the file system. In that CGI bin folder, there's also a file called shell. <laughs> so I got back in and uh, told them the next day about it and repeat. So that's the best part. Once I got to talk to someone in charge of their product development, great guy, um, his first response was, there's a problem. This is not a production device. What? I bought a Tesla at the Tesla price and the autopilot crashes on me because it's a debug version I have. No, sorry Tesla guys, I'm just jealous. Everybody in my neighborhood has one except for me. So if you guys are thankful for the talk, don't hesitate. Thank you. <laughs> um, so six months later, I'm pretty sure they were actually not lying. It was a very convenient excuse, but they happened to ship me a development build and a few thousand others uh, throughout the world. God. What they did well, once I had a line of communication with Tygo, they were actually very welcoming of my finding and relatively forthcoming with sharing the insider information. Like for example, telling me oh, all of those devices are on the same subnet through the VPN tunnel. Um, that would have been preferable for not, them not to tell me that. Um, one thing I discovered, log shipping. Especially for the one, uh, oh, this is a very important question, guys. Who in the audience is a black hat versus a white hat? Come on, raise your hands. Oh my God, there's not a single hand up. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so next time you go on a system you're not authorized to, think about disconnecting it from the network before. Because this guy ships its logs every half an hour. And boy was I noisy. Of course there was nobody looking, thank God. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's important to realize that even small IoT devices have that capability and uh, you might trigger a few alerts if you're not too careful. So, I got root, I made fun of the vendor, why am I talking about this? And this is actually the most important slide of the entire presentation. Yeah, I could remotely see this little red button the software behind it. I could remotely shut down any of those thousands of solar arrays. I could be a pain to people off the grid, maybe. I don't have, there's not enough electricity production for it to be meaningful yet. It will be in a few years, but not today. What's more important is this is a bot. I could have a thousand of those remotely controlled on your home network spying on your home activity. You know, oh shoot, my, my kid is here so I can't say prawn, but things like that. Um, the biggest part, the part that bugs me the most is even though I've been a security practitioner for a long time, only after this device being on my network did I realize I really needed two networks. My home personal network and a completely independent IoT network on which I have, of course, this guy now, he was the first candidate, 
but the Nest, um, a few development boards. Who's played with the particle photon photons? Yay! Those are excellent devices. Uh, but just like this guy, don't trust them. Um, my security cameras, you know those cameras that I bought on Alibaba with that Chinese firmware that is apparently very chatty. Uh, I won't go further. So yeah, is your mom or your brother or your family expected to have two networks at home and to be able to manage those? No, there is no way that, that even us handle it. There is no way that customers of IOTs can ex be expected to actually protect themselves from those devices. That is a very sad state and I hope that message comes out of DEF CON as much as possible because it is time that we have a UL rating of devices uh, that also takes into account your privacy because we all have that expectation. You don't buy a car without seat belts. Yes. Responsible disclosure is hard. Yes, don't give up. Please follow responsible disclosure. And finally, thank you to all IoT devices for so much entertainment. <laughs> thank you to quite a few people, my wife for tolerating my late nights. Uh, Rafael, where are you? Stand up. Keep doing your packet storming. And Tygo for not suing me, thank you. Uh, you got me scared there. Guys, thank you. Sorry about the video. Yeah, you screwed up half of the crowd.